You are listening to the Hello Sport Podcast. Good morning, Edward. Good morning. How are you? Well. You good? Good. Yeah. Yeah. I've got a fucking new rom-com everyone should add to their uh, to their little rom-com black book, and it's fucking bad. And I've forgotten the name of it already. <laughs> Perfect. Fuck. What's, um... So it's not as good as J-Lo's I still haven't watched that yet. Is that on Netflix, that J-Lo one? Don't know. Fuck. Probably. Because we were. Tr- I was like, I was getting into my, well, we pant- We got into our rom-com last night. I can't remember I was what like, it's called. Is it called? What's it called? It's called Mar- Marry Me. It's on- Marry, Marry Me. Now? No, Marry just Marry Me. Okay. It's it's on Binge and Foxell. Okay, sweet. Binge. Well, I'll be fucking getting into that one. But no, this was on Netflix. George Clooney, Julia Roberts, fucking they're old. And then like their daughter's- eloped in Bali or something. Oh, shit. Ticket to Paradise. Ticket to That's Paradise. That's the one they filmed in Byron, isn't it? I have no idea about that. Oh, and they're trying to ruin it? They're ruin? trying to ruin the wedding of yes. their daughter. Yes. Because they got married early and it didn't work yeah. out. And yeah, then, that's right. Mate, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, I've seen it. Oh, you've seen it? Yeah, fucking up. It is some cornball shit, dude. Oh, my God. But, like, also what I found a little bit uh, confronting, and you may remember this, but, like, I am used to George Clooney being cool. And he plays like a Magoo dad. And I'm just like, this is weird for me now. Yeah, stick to what you know, George. Be, be hot and brooding and old. And even for a... Can you tell, get me how old George Clooney is? Like, he's mm-hmm. fucking old, I think. He'd be in late 60s, would he? Oh, maybe mid have I gone, He'd be 60, have I gone right? over the He'd have to be at that. least 60-something. He is 62. Dude. So, oh, yeah. 60s. 60s is the new 50, though. And it, look, it is. That's it, what they say, anyway. Yeah. And, and like that's probably I think that people say that as they get older, right? But like to see like and then Julia Roberts of Pretty Woman fame of fucking Notting Hill fame, it's like damn man. Yeah, just but they've old. got you know just getting old, getting old. George doesn't do much anymore. I think once he became a billionaire, he sort of just fucking and a dad out as a well. Bit. I believe father, old father as well. Not knocking old dads, but like. I'm telling, like, I know it's fucking, I mean, look, like, if you're 62 trying to chase after little fucking four-year-olds, like. Well, I don't know how much he'd be doing, mate. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to guess for George. Well, if you're not doing it, you should be doing it. George, you should be. You should be. Now, I just, I'm, if you can as well, especially George, who's fucking got all the money in the world. If you got to, like, go and, you know, work your dick to the bone, then it's a different story. But George could be doing it. Yeah, I'm he, just thinking. Mitchell Moses could be changing his kids' nappies. I'm just thinking if you're 62, the whips are cracking with the kids, you're a billionaire, yeah, but you'd probably you, tap out. You'd nah. probably go, I'm going to fucking, I'm going to go for a nap. Well, maybe, yeah, maybe it's nap time, but you'd probably, he would be napping, but you should be more involved. Since, uh, since 2016, he's only been in like four different productions. When were his kids born? Um, if you don't change your kids' nappies, that's a nick for me. You're a dog. Uh, 2017, they had twins. There you go. Twins. Twins. Yep. Good luck. Maybe that's why he's not working. I don't want to make assumptions on behalf of George. No, you shouldn't. Maybe he just wants to be a family man now. You know, he's spent, he spent his whole life chonging and gallivanting and Do you reckon tequila. he was a prolific chonger? Yes, bro. He was with fucking Stacey Keebler of WWF fame. And I say that because she's obviously she's gorgeous, but it's like it's a random one. Who the fuck's that? Stacey Keebler. She was an absolute, is a smoke show. Never heard certainly. of Stacey Keebler in me life, punters and dribblers. And that shouldn't shock. No, but I he was like a bit of a shock. Leo vibe, like, where, but where he just chonged everyone. But not to Leo's sort of like, I only fuck 25 year old models. You gotta, the thing about it, and, and George, George, I think would be aware at, at some point you gotta make way for the next generation. Mm. You know what I mean? You gotta put your sword away. You gotta put your sword away. Like, you know, if I was if I was George and I saw the way Ryan Gosling, for example, gets about his work, I go, you know what, you have it, young Bark. But even now, Ros- Gosling's put his sword away. Well, he was in Barbie. Oh, I'm talking more his penis. Oh, his penis. Yeah. Yes, right. You meant sword as an acting sword. Yes. I obviously always thinking about dicks. It, it would be, it would seem um, the acting sword. Maybe he's putting his acting sword away, but also like. You can't be in Barbie if you're 62. No, you can't. As Ken, right? No, well, that's what I mean. Yeah, you can't. But like, that's so you're not I'm putting saying. your sword away as much as you're getting metaphorically beheaded yeah, by I the. I mean, you can't. By there's Father very Tom. few roles in movies, and I'm happy to be proven wrong here, but many, most of the role, most of the leading men roles, you've got to be at a certain age bracket. Mm-hmm. Like, 
Not many old guys are carrying movies. No, except for Kill the Wedding or whatever the fuck the movie's called. What did I watch last night? Marry Me? Oh, no, the, uh, Ticket to Paradise. Ticket to Paradise. Yes. Where, like, you know, but the whole thing is, like, old married couple, right? They're not, it's not like, it's not like he's, you know, pretty woman. But I think that it seems like those types of films are the ones aimed at people that age. Like, the ones that, like, Meryl Streep's still getting around. Exactly you know, right. Those types of movies. Meryl Streep's either going to play some like hectic character actor role she's going to get an Oscar for it yep. or she's playing like some quirky grandmother in a fucking movie there's for no sure. in between no there isn't no there isn't and that's same with dudes George Clooney now he's either going to be like in Ocean's 14 sexy cool brooding get, bring the gang back together bring the gang back together with his hey. amazing voice or he's going to be like jumping off a boat and pulling weird faces and like dancing like he's like in the movie he's dancing like like an old dad embarrassing his daughter and he's getting drunk Another question that has actually arisen from this movie, and it's not from, like, it, I was asking it to myself last night, but I ask it to myself all the time. Like, is beer pong the most overrated game of all time and just an American cultural fucking thing? Well, it's not an Australian game. Like, we don't, like, we still do it. I've played it here before, but, like... Don't pull faces. We, we play beer pong heaps. All the well, time. but, yeah, but that, I'm not surprised by that. No, it's no, beer no. Pong that's, or that says more about you. But maybe that's a bit. Well, Tobler's fucking nodding his head off as well. Maybe Are you that's, nodding too, Tobler? Yeah, we play beer pong and shit like that but all the time. All the time? Rage all cage. the time. All the time. Right, yeah. Jesus. How maybe often is all. Like, it, every okay. time you go out, you play it? No, this is what I mean. If there's a prize of more than, like, 10 people, let's say, and you've got the facilities or at someone's house if they've got a table and people have brought ping pong balls, it's either going to be beer pong or stack cup. Jesus Christ, man. Interesting. I don't know if that's like a globalization thing where like the advent of the internet, Edward, has meant that we're much closer to each other than we once were. We were and we now, because you see it more. We were, we were. I knew it existed, but I'm like, I just don't really, I couldn't be fucked. Like, do you fucking play spin the goon bag and shit? Or is mm. that because no one has backyards anymore? No one, well, the hill's hoist, Eddie, is no made way the for the dryer. Hoist. Yeah, you can't or do the it clothes in a, horse. the dryer, exactly. The poor old hill's hoist. One of the great Australian inventions. Yeah. Fucking gone. Yeah. Fucked off. Ugly as shit, but... Oh, listen, but if you had a nice... But really, really effective. I think that the, the nice steel-coloured hill's hoist was true and honest, like that silver one. When you started getting into, like, we had a green one with, like, the yellow sort of... We had a green one. Yeah. We had a green one. Getting to their work, and then that's no disrespect. In fact, all respect to the Hills Hoist, but, like... In every house I grew up in, except the... Well, the two that I did most of my work growing up in we, were Hills Hoist in both. Yeah. I think it was a silver and then a green. I always had a Hills Hoist until I moved But to you Sydney. don't see them anymore. No, you don't. You walk down the fucking... You, backyards do not have Hills Hoist. New houses no, never have them. I wonder what that's about, though. Is that a space Ugly. thing? Ugly? Ugly. Yeah, because, see, like, I mean, we don't have space for one in a house, but, like, let's just say we did. It is easier to just have, like, clothes horse. I... Am, listen, I think that... And I'm, I'm, I'm making a blanket call here. I think women decided that they don't like the look of them. I'm thinking of Ella here. I think that if it was left up to me, I'd probably have one because would, of their effective drying capabilities, yeah. Tom. Also, th their, their ability to spin in the wind. They're allowing wind to get into their work as well, well as sunshine. Exactly right. It's, it's sunshine played into wind. Yeah. Wind doing all the heavy lifting, spinning that bitch. Yeah. Spinning that bitch. Mm. Nothing. You can't put anything on a hill's hoist and not have it dry. Like, it will not stay wet up there. No. Even really salty towels will dry on yeah. a hill's hoist. Mm -hmm. That's and the power of it. They're better than uh, we, because we, so like we have a dry, well, do we have a dryer? No, we don't have a dryer. You don't have a dryer? No, we don't have a dryer. What? I hate dryers. How the fuck do you live? Mate, my place is like in a constant state of You like, hate dryers? Well, it shrinks all your shit. No, it doesn't. Yeah, it does. No, it doesn't. It shrinks all your t-shirts. Undies, towels, sheets. Oh, yeah, yeah, undies, towels, sheets. What are we talking about? But it's- Like t-shirts, yeah, T-shirts sure. and everything. That but wet sheets, wet towels, undies, yeah, socks, yeah, yeah. No, mate. No, no, but, uh, but I will say this, because I agree with you there, like that stuff, which in- Truth would make my life a whole lot easier because, and by my life I mean our life, and by our life I mean like I'm step. off. I'm often caught short on undies. Oh fuck, I don't have any undies. Like bang, wash, and then straight into the dryer. Job done. I've already fixed that problem for you though, Eddie. Go down to fucking Kmart, Big W, wherever the hell, and you buy a thirty pack of underpants. I swear there is an there is like probably twenty pairs of undies that never get seen because they're just constantly like it's the best decision I've ever made. Now that's by the by, sun dried. Bed sheets greater than dryer dried bed sheets. There's something about 
UV rays, good honest UV rays. I would say drying bed sheets. I would I would have a probably a different opinion. I think I don't have the space at my place to hang sheets. I've got to fucking put them over fucking chairs and shit. That's not what the we right have to vibe. do as well. Not the right vibe. They're not get the wind's not working properly. Well, we've got to we've got to close on the backyard. You get these things out of the fucking dryer, bro. They're hot and soft and ready to go. I will admit that static. he's hoisty. That no static. Not, not on linen, they're not static Oh, at all. no, you don't get static on linen. Nah. Well, that's, you just don't. Listen, you just linen just doesn't get static. Linen, outside the dryer, thanks for coming. Nah, listen, I get the dryer for things of that nature, 100%. Which is what I just described. No, no, exactly. So I'm in agreement there. But sun-dried bed sheets, literally, and I'm not saying semi-sun-dried, sun-dried bed sheets. Mwah. What do you do on a wet... How many how many pe- pairs of sheets you got in rotation? We've got a couple, but you need a couple mainly for the fucking... The, the family, right? Because shit just gets like, you know, Eve will come and piss all over your bed. You got to have spare bed sheets, right? Like that stuff happens. But um, I listen to dry would be nice for certain things, but it shrinks too much shit, dude. It shrinks too much shit. Clothes on out the back, we're good. But it's, I mean, it's not, it's no Hills Hoist, I can guarantee you that. They don't, it's funny as well with, with, with shirts, cotton shirts. Once you've had them for a while, I'm going to say, Six months, they won't. They will. They won't shrink the dryer. Like they've made up their mind as to their size. Yes. No. I, there's a certain if point. You, where if it, you put a new one in, oh, big it's trouble. It's gone. Big it's trouble. It's gone. But then again, if you've, it's a. I, I almost think you just need to get a little bit bigger and dry it immediately, and then go. Okay, I think we've. No, because the problem is, it is, won't keep shrinking. Is that it shrinks up, but it doesn't shrink in. in. So you end up wearing a square shirt. Yeah. Look, you got a little bit of tummy showing. Every time you reach your so arms up. It's wide as fuck. <laughs> like, and that's one thing that does my fucking head in. Yeah. If you're going to shrink cotton shirt, shrink, shrink everywhere. Uniformly. Yeah, yeah. Don't shrink up. You got to shrink into your lazy fucking thing. Yeah. Such a lazy. But also, it's such it, it's it a lazy material. It's yeah. a lazy fiber. Fabric. Why doesn't it shrink in? Like, why does it only shrink long ways? I it doesn't make sense. No reach idea. out. Reach out, seamstress. I, and then you got to pull it down because it's your belly button showing, and you're you're embarrassed. Yeah, maybe you're a little bit fat. Doesn't look good. You're sitting down. Um, but a quick shout out to Barbie. Great movie. Quick shout out to Margot Robbie, who, in my opinion, now Tom, she's at the tippity top. Yeah, she's number one female in the world. Yep. Okay, actress. Actress. That's my opinion. You play that into like a. Do you know a, what she made off that movie as well recently? Like, because she was she got like because I think her production company produced it. Barbie, yeah, did one. It's already done one point two yeah, yeah, billion. Boy. So what she gets as part of like the, I don't exactly know the, how it works, but she gets like seventy mil on top of whatever she was paid, which was like twenty. Ninety Isn't mil, good on her. Good she's on her. Fucking elite, dude. Yeah. She's elite. Yeah, and she's only our age. I know, which is wild. It, it's 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 rattling. I can't believe she was twenty three when she did Wolf, Wolf of Wall Street. Wall Street. I, well, have we talked about this before? You well, and you I. and I have certainly talked about it. I can't get over that. No, like, I know that is insane. But also, like, you need to have a level of confidence to be able to go and mix it with Leo DiCaprio on a Scorsese film set with Jonah Hill and shit when you're twenty three years old. Not to mention the head noise of getting. Butt ass naked in that thing. Now, obviously, she is a fucking smoke show, so it's probably easy to be confident. Like, it's probably easy to be walk around with a big fat dick as opposed to walking around with a little pinner. Yes, but, yeah, yeah, but yeah, you know, yeah. like yeah. that you're trying to like you're trying you know, to chug, tease into, up. you're trying to wake up. <laughs> yeah, you're trying to wake up before a scene. <laughs> like, if you can just if you can just be hung all the time, yeah, like then life's going to be a stuff. lot easier, right? Yeah, sort of show up. So yeah, the confidence comes from also the fact that she's an absolute smoke show. But like, she's a shower. Yes, she's a shower, not a grower. Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But still, twenty three in that in that environment. Insane. Remember what we were doing at twenty three? No, <laughs> not well, much. I, well, yeah, playing FIFA, playing FIFA, ripping cones. Yeah, looking for a job. Yeah, looking for a job. Wigging out about laughing at Charlie Sheen and Tiger Blood or whatever the fuck. That was probably when he was going through that. Yeah, sleeping about on then. couches. About then. Probably had bed bugs, shingles, shingles. At L. Yep. And she's just out there doing the damn thing. So congratulations to Margot. So it was a good movie. Yeah, it's good. Some people go, like, you've seen the news getting all upset. I haven't seen it, obviously, but, like, because it's like, all the patriarchy or some bullshit. But then people are like, dude, it's just a fucking movie. Relax. It's a movie. Yeah. Chill out. And, like, Relax. let's not pretend like there isn't some form of patriarchy loosely. Yeah. Let's just enjoy the film. On the fucking numbers and the figures, men are in charge of more shit. Like, I don't, you know, you don't need to see Barbie to work that out, no. surely. No. 
But it was, it was. I liked how they did it. It was quite clever, and they make a point at the end where it's like, well, you know, the matriarchy in Barbie world Same sort thing. of oppresses men. Yeah, you right. know what I mean. So, like, is that a nice thing? It's just how like, was our boy Goz? Elite. Yeah, right. One scene, dude. I was giggling like a little schoolgirl. <laughs> I don't know if you can say that, but I was giggling. Well, you can say that. Okay. School girls can giggle. Cool. Which scene was it? The uh, when the they when they go into the real world and they're yeah. like fucking oh. rollerblading, dude. And I was like losing it. I I thought it was. And he goes up the fucking escalator. fantastic. He goes up the escalator in that building, and there's like Sylvester Stallone and all these cowboys and horses and shit. And he's, and just, he's just frothing losing his mind because like. in the Barbie world, that's like a matriarchy. So they're like sort of oh, okay. oppressed. Okay. I gotcha. Like, yeah, they yeah, don't yeah. have their own sort of vibe. And then he's like comes to the real world. He's like, holy shit, <laughs> it's fucking good. Well done. Well done, well everyone, done. and congratulations to Margot. I read in the paper the on the weekend, I believe it was in uh, maybe a Danny Wide's column, but someone had made a fake tweet from Widler saying that Margot Robbie was a dogs fan, and then it got, like, traction. And then now, according to D. Wides, they are, PVL's trying to get her involved in, trying to find out if she actually does, like, any rugby league team to try to get her involved in Vegas. Is she from Goldie? Goldie? She's from Dalby Goldie? in Queensland, which Queensland. is near the Gold Coast. Mate, you'd have to think she likes some form of rugby league, or at least her family does. Like, you she know, would who have your been. Dad go for? I'm, I'm, I'm fairly confident that she would have been in and around the game time. You fucking know, mate. A Queensland, a you'd have to know. You'd have to know. You'd have to know. Get Margaret to Las Vegas. Get her over there. Get her over there. Anyway, anyway shout out to her. Aussie's doing good. Aussie doing good. Um. Now, Saturday, Edward, you and I, I just thought it was worth mentioning the fact that, like, the big three of Australian running got together for a fucking trot. A great a, trot. With a bunch of dribblers on the weekend. Saturday morning, first light, woke up rattled. I was like, where yeah. am I? Well, What's going on? Why is it 615? We didn't tie one on, but we, we, you know, we did a little number on ourselves. Tiny on number. Friday. Tiny Why number. is it 6.15am? Why is my alarm going off? Where should I be? Like, this is foreign. Remembered I had to get up and, and pump myself up for the run. Mm. She had to clear eyes. Get down there, feeling good, looking good. Um, couple of panels. Are <laughs> hey, you a big clear eyes, man? You must no, be. never. Oh, right. Well, I haven't used it since we used it the last time. <laughs> Sat that same bottle? Yeah. That was an important. That was an important I looked at myself and I'm eyes. like, you look. You just look too tired. I think you need to pump yourself up. Clear eyes, you look fresh as you a do. daisy. You do. It's one of the great wall pulls. So shout out to clear eyes. Um... Mate, get down there. Obviously, do a day. You've told me to go to the wrong place. Yep. Uh, that shouldn't shock How anyone. How was that my bad? Well, listen. Sebo called me and said, Dave said this is where we're going to meet. Got there. No one was there, obviously. Um, no one should be surprised by that. We eventually find where we're supposed to go. Yeah. And quite a good turnout. Yes. Quite a good turnout. So we had, um, it was like a, I keep trying to work out what you describe. It's not a practice run. It's not a training run. It's a fucking... Park run. Park run with a bunch of dribblers from our Goers Run Club team uh, through Sydney Marathon and Arrow. And they were getting their shirts handed out for them. The Goers Run Club shirts. We all got caught up, had a bit of a yarn, and we went for a, a trot together. But I think, you know, what it was also like the, you know, Pete, what I heard sort of whispered around the traps and then sort of saw it trending worldwide. It was like the big three of Australian running got together in Simpson, Birmingham and Brockman. The big three. The big three. For a good trot. For a great trot. He helped me with my stitch at one point because there was a stitch coming on pretty early. Now, that probably had a lot to do with the pizza and tequila that I'd had the night before. Did he help you with his stitch, did you? Mate, he said, hold this rock. If you get a stitch, I was running the other day and I got a stitch that was fucking killing me and I was like Googling as I'm running how to get rid of a stitch. It was all bullshit. Didn't do anything. It was like trying to exhale on your left foot going on the ground. Then Brockman's like, just pick up a, a sharp rock and squeeze it in your hand. Mm. And I don't know if it's like you focus on something else, but it worked. It fucking worked. Good. Yeah. It was great to have Ned Brockman down there. Just, just a presence in the. Well, he's part room. of the Goers Run Club as well. He is. He jumped ship. He jumped I, ship. I don't know who he was with. Well, he might have even left his own ship. The Brockman Run team. He goes, come get in the Goers Club. Was there a Brockman Run? I team? I don't think there was. To be honest, I think Brockman is his own fucking ship. I don't think there was one. I feel like we've almost like rafted his ship to our ship. It's just two ships. Two ship, big ships. Yes, huge ships. Massive ships. Yeah. But good to hear that he's involved mm. officially in official capacity. Yeah. I think that he just, what motivated more him more than anything, Tom, is that he saw how well we move. I don't know if we've run with him before. No, we definitely haven't. So he saw how well we move. I think that's point number one. Yeah. 
Point number two, just just a real nice community down there of yeah, goers getting after it. It was really nice. I unfortunately, I think it was probably on our third lap. Pace got second to you. lap. No, I had to peel away and pace got to you. I had to peel off and pace got to you and get rid of some uh, refuse from inside me. That's that's a nice way of saying take a shit. Uh, and I lost everyone. Obviously, I wasn't going to expect anyone to wait for me, but it then meant that I was just trotting by myself for the remainder of the run. You know, look, it's not the end of the world, but... Weren't you with the dribbler at the end? I fucking was... I lapped that poor bastard. I found him, and then I, you know, found some dribblers that were just trotting along, so I was like, well, I'll run with these guys. Bring them home, you know? Bring Try and home. boy the boys home. Nice, buddy. Yeah, you know, just doing my bit. Just doing my bit, mate, you know. Just, Garmin's got a good workout, which is nice. I know, I just... But it my, didn't mind up... Didn't upload to Strava. Oof, didn't it? Which I'm, I'm annoyed by. You didn't save it properly. No, I did save it. You obviously didn't, though. Because if you did, it would have uploaded. Just no, because Tubler reckons that don't automatically upload. Well, mine did. Remember you said that, Tubler? Yeah, you got to sync your watch. you got to sync your watch to Just Strava. after, and then it'll post. Oh, no. Nah. Mine just fucking goes up. Yeah, but that's what mine did the other day, and then it didn't this time. So... Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. You just got to... So I don't like that. I want it. consistency. It's not a big Garmin guy, clearly. Not a big Garmin guy. Me? Yeah. Uh, I'm a bigger Garmin guy than you. Well, mine sinks, bro, so maybe not. Um, anyway. <laughs> that was fun. Uh, it we, was fun. Do we have any... You can still join our team as well. It's it's The the spots are obviously filling up. I think the max, as we said, 600 is the max you can do. You can still go on. There's no promo code. You don't get any discount anymore. That's all gone. But if you join, you will get to come and kick on with us at the Ivy after the race so 600 max i think we're like five. you also get a shirt you also get a marathon shirt 510 or 20 we're up to 500 and something 500 and something uh so feel free to join and also if you already joined a chain team you can jump ship like brockman did uh and switch to the goers i'd i'd jump i'd highly, i'd definitely jump i'd highly encourage jumping. i wouldn't stay where you are why the fuck would you do that <sighs> sounds like that i'd be jumping totally for sure jump. yep uh, but we are four. We're inside of four weeks. Inside of four weeks, punters and dribblers. So mm. this is whips are cracking sort of time. Yep. Uh, Tobler looked pretty good out there. Twenty one of the best. Mm -hmm. Not a bad pace either, buddy. No, I think that was the fastest one I've done. Buoyed by the spirit of the community. That first ten k, I was pushing it because like fuck, you run it with Brockman and the goers. So the splits were much quicker, and then that second half was you're a also, bit more you're, slow. You were also running with me and Eddie, though, as well, right? Well, yeah, of course. We the still, what, were, what were we getting around, like, 5.15 or something, were we? Yeah, it was quick. Something like that. Pretty yeah. sharp. Yeah, you were running with the big dogs. No, it was great. Technically, second half was technically I blew out because I didn't have to go and take a shit. But I was running at 5.15 before I had to go and take a shit. Pace got to you. That's fine. No, it happens, No, that happens to everyone. We are brought to you, as always, by our good friends at N Neds. E D. S N E D S N E D S N E D S Neds. Who do we like? Neds. So Neds, if you don't know, they are the betting platform of choice. If you do enjoy having a punt, then Neds is where you should do it. They've obviously got all of the the mod cons, the markets, and this and that, and all of the the things that you would want to be betting on. They've also got the private group channel. They're the only betting platform that has the about even private group channel. I can tell you that for free. The only one. Only one. We're the biggest group on the platform. Yes, we are. So if you want to come join the biggest group on the platform, come join the about even group. Yep. On Ned's secret, secret code, code. Dribbler. Or is it dribblers? No, it's dribbler. It's dribbler. dribbler. Don't you worry about that. Thanks, mate. Uh, and we'll see you in there for a little laugh and a chuckle and a pull rah hee hee. Chances are you're about to lose. For free and confidential support, call the number on screen or visit the website. Do you want to talk? Just, I mean, look, there is some sport going on. Like, don't get me wrong. There is some sport going on. But I was wondering, Eddie, if you had any thoughts about the um, the rat and the P's and D's. About the guy who... Yeah, well, we might have a... We've got a rat in the P's and D's. Who? I don't know who. If I knew who it was. But... P's and D's. Uh, oh, I didn't know what you were talking about. I'm like, what are you talking about? Oh, you don't know? No, I do know. Oh, you do know now. It's on a uh, certain publication. Yeah, it's on, there's a screenshot of, the, of a post in the P's and D's that's appeared in a certain uh, news publication. 
Yes. Um, Having in, in regards to a certain player who... Was suspended for some fucking... Certain actions. Yeah, well, so were highly... Ter- highly fucking disgraceful. Yep. Um, now, where, how do we feel about the... Because there's two elements to this. There's, there's, we've clearly got a rat in the P's and D's who's looking to farm our content out to media for their own, you know, like... Personal gain. Personal gain. But then there's also the posting of videos in the P's and D's which is kind of ratty. So this person basically fucking took a photo of Dylan Brown out at a pub and put it in the P's and D's. And a video. And a video. And was like, oh, he's on the prowl or some shit, which obviously is suggestive as fuck, but like, you know. Now listen, Dylan Brown, what he did fucking, I don't think we need to sit here and talk about how we don't condone it. I'd also be like, bro, I probably don't go to the pub on the back of that. Maybe just lay low for a little bit. Because yeah. he apparently said like, I'm not, I wasn't drinking, I was designated driver, which is all Sweet play on, but like, now that's just a side issue. That's a by the by. By the by, what do we think about the posting in the P's and D's? I, listen, I don't honestly, know if we want the. Do we, we want the P's and D's to be a place where we're ratting on a player being just out? No, I, I don't, don't think, think so. so. I don't think that's in the spirit of the group, Tom. No, and I think that's probably the yardstick that I'm I'm willing to use here. Is it in the spirit of the group of punting and dribbling? Because the spirit of the group. Is punting and dribbling. Mainly dribbling, some punting, but punting and dribbling. Mm. It's not ratting. That's what I would say. And I think within reason as well. We're within reason. Like, within reason. Like this is sort of like you just some guy just you're just sort of relatively minding his own business, so. Yeah. Wasn't up to any no good in the videos, put no. it that way. And people implying, oh, but he said he wasn't drinking. Well, was sure. he drinking? Listen, yeah. It's more about and it's not about who it is either. It's just like, let's try and but I'm also very interested mainly about who the, the, the media rat is. Because it is I, a private group. I think there's a number of media rats in there. And the problem is, Tom, it's hard to spot a rat. Real hard to spot one. You can flush one out. Yeah, you, dribbles, can. you can flush one out. I don't know how, but you can. And we may need to devise a plan to flush one rat, out. Rat on your rat mates. If you've got a rat mate in there, rat on the rat. It's not going to get any in trouble. It's not like, what the fuck can we do? We just want to know. Yeah. Morbid curiosity. Yeah. But like we are asking for, you know, rats to rat on rats. Rat out your rat, mate. Yeah. What is it like? What's the saying where it's like... Um, Should we be getting... To, like, to- rats are able to prosper if good rats... Sit by and don't well, rat. Well, bad rats are able to prosper if good rats sit by and, and don't, don't rat. rat. <laughs> Think about that. Think about it. Just, just ponder that over your fucking... You your know, muesli. Your, your muesli today. Yep. Or, or, your, or your coffee. Or bacon your and egg roll. Bacon and egg roll. Or maybe your... A sumo salad. Maybe a sumo salad. Maybe, Tom, your burrito bowl from Cali Press. Just, just think about that. Bad rats are able to prosper when good rats sit by and don't rat. Behave right. yourselves in there, cunts. Um, yeah, behave yourselves. Behave yourselves. Let's not get too... Let's keep it fun in there. Um, I heard a funny story on the weekend, and it's given me a bit of inspiration for, like, potentially doing another Dribbler Hotline episode. Yep. Had um, some friends over to the house on the weekend for, like, a little BBQ. Street and Koo came over with little Rosie and Talia and Jidge. Shout out to Talia. You know Tiles. Talia was at... I know Talia. You know Tiles. Tiles and uh, Jidge were at the uh, Australia v England soccer game. Talia nips downstairs for... Now, she didn't cla- specify here, but I'm going to say probably a little poo. Sam Kerr hits her goal, and she just hears the whole crowd go fucking mental. Like, she was like... She was like, the building was shaking, and I'm like, fuck, fuck, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> like, rushing any quicker is going to make the goal happen again. <laughs> and, yeah, but yeah... Uh, no, I get it, but dude. Yeah, it's I'd not be even about thing. seeing the goal again. It's about being, being up there with the people. The people. Anyway, she gets up there and realises what she's missed and fucking Jidge is just like losing his mind, fucking going psycho, shaking. And then like Tali's like almost gutted, like she's almost about to start crying. She's Which is almost a complete waste of your time. It, well, it is. We lost. So from there, you fuck, you see England score, you miss the greatest goal of the whole tournament, probably the greatest goal an Australian's ever scored, and then we lose the game. And then you get stuck fucking with trains and shit. How long was she out there for? Don't know, but it wasn't short. I think she was one of the lucky-er ones because it was like, she, they bailed like 
uh, as soon as they scored the third goal. It was like, yeah, see you later. Um, anyway, Dribbler Hotline, what have you missed? I like that. What have you missed? Yeah, what have you life? missed? Just by like accident, unfortunate circumstances, some a car breaking. Like, down. so I know one of you missed Tedesco's try. Game In origin, three, yeah, exactly. Origin twenty twenty, whenever that was. That sort of thing is what we're looking or for. Or like, here. didn't like Mark Wahlberg? Uh, Mark Wahlberg left. Left when the Patriots were down against the Falcons. By 21 points or whatever it was. In the Super Bowl. Points, and then they came back and won and he's in the car on the way home because he fucking pretends to be a massive fan, but yeah. clearly isn't. Yeah. Uh, very Mark Wahlberg thing to do. Shame on you, Mark. Doesn't have to just be sport commuting, but like, what did you miss? Because missing that Sam Kerr goal is fucked. I kept say, I kept like, it was one of those things that just kept coming back to me. All afternoon, I just keep going, oh, my God. Ty, I can't believe you missed that fucking goal. Like, it's one of the greatest things I've ever seen. Yeah, you've got to be better. That's – I mean, you just basically have to not piss or well, you've shit. Got to, you've got to be better. It's as simple as that. You've got to, you've got to, you've got to, you've got to read – you've got to get a feel for things and yeah. go, well, there might be something historic about to happen. Yeah, here. yeah. You've got to be prepared for – You've got to be tapped in. His, history uh, – You've you know, got to be prepared for history. Knocking on the door. If you're not prepared for history, then you're in big trouble. Big, big trouble. Huge trouble. Massive trouble. If you're not prepared for history, big trouble. That's what I've always said. Yeah, you have always said that, and I respect that about you. Always said it. Consistency. Consistency is key. Yeah. Now, Dribbler Hotline, you know the number. If you don't, go to the Instagram. It's in the bio. It's eight, easy. Eight one two three two one zero zero. There you go. What'd you miss? If we get okay, enough, we'll cool do a fucking, in. we'll do a, we'll do a bespoke episode. Now, last night, Tom, England lost to Spain. Yeah, Spain won, but England lost. So that's good. That was great. England losing is good f- for me. Mm. It's good for you. Mm-hmm. It's good for the goose and it's good for the gander. Yeah, well said. Now, I hate England. I just want everyone to know that. I, I hate them. I hate their fans. You all look yep. like dorks. Uh, that's obviously in a sporting context. But you're all dorks. In a sporting context. Big, big dorks. Sporting wise. Yeah. Huge dorks. Huge dorks. Listen, you lost. You haven't, you've undefeated in like 32 games and you lost the biggest game of all. So You guys can't win the big games. You can't like, win them. You, we weren't right. expected to win the World Cup. Obviously, it would have been nice if we did, but we weren't expected to. You can't win the big dancers. Listen, the last Football World Cup you won was like in the 60s when no one really cared. Yeah. So It was yeah. a different place. The and it's like place. your game. Like, yeah. It's like you fucking touch yourself. And you keep and singing It's Coming Home. Like that's You guys jinx yourself. You yeah. early crow yourself every the longer, fucking time. The longer time. you sing that song, the like the less chance you have of winning, or the more it's delayed. Yeah, put it that way. Yeah, love it. It's nothing's so coming good. home. Piers Morgan on Twitter again. You know we've spoken about Piers, but he in a bizarre fucking move, like started basically. And there's a lot of like emotional girls on here. I'm like that seems like you're. I know you are trying to trouble. That seems an oddly fucking. I think he. But also, like the way you pissed in your little pants about fucking. He likes to keep up appearances, stuff. and his appearances are just huge, big, fat piglet. Yeah. So, piglets need to behave like piglets. I yeah. think that's what you see out of peers every week, yeah. nay, every day. Yeah. Now, the big news out of this victory, Tom, unfortunately, the, fam, the player of the tournament scored the goal, her father died. That's sad. It's fucking awful. It's not about that. It's about, I would start to hear, I don't know how I missed this, but I was informed on the weekend that half the Spanish players weren't even at, the, like their best players weren't even at the World Cup because they fucking staged a coup last year and they were like, if you don't fucking sack our manager, then we're quitting. The manager is the son of of the head of football in Spain, oh. right? Nepotism at its very, very best. Apparently, the coach, the manager, all alleged punters and jubblers, is one of the great cunts all time. Oh. Like, an unimaginable cunt. Abusive and shit. Like, I don't know, physical, but like, well, fuck alleged. Not. Yeah, alleged. So there's, there's no allegations of, I think, like physical or sexual abuse or anything, but in September of last year, 15 players, as you said, good players, like these players, you know, starters for Man United, Man City, Barcelona, uh, sent a collective, well, it wasn't actually a collective email. They all sent an email to the RFEF, which is the Spanish Football Federation, all with quite similar wording saying that the coach's style, which they described as, I think, like authoritarian or dictatorial, uh, was not good for their 
emotional and physical health or whatever, the players, there was a response from the RFEF, which was basically like offensive saying, we don't accept this. There will be severe punishments if you don't, uh, you know, adhere to your call up to the Spanish team. Um, and we're not going to sack him. The players came out and said, we didn't ask you to sack him, but we're saying that, you know, changes need to be made. Um, and the Spanish Football Federation basically came back and said, we're not listening to you. We support the coach. We don't buy into what you're saying. A very rare instance of a football federation, a federation a, a, in general supporting the coach over the players. Yeah, well, and it seems like uh, you and, know, but, but you've, he I've was tied to why. the yeah, tippity top. But then, what, so like some of the players didn't like him. Some of them didn't give a shit. Like the ones that decided to play didn't well, care. Some, some of them want glory. But like I know, because they so the way it's so been they were vindicated. Me, they fucking won the thing. But the way it was explained to me is they have got one of the elite sides, and they should have won more earlier. But he's buying a bit of a handbrake, this guy. So the fact they did it with even half the players there is, is very, very impressive. But then there's all these screenshots from last night when they'd won the coaching group over here, the players over here, like no interaction. I saw them all jumping around on him when he, when they won it. No, oh, apparently oh, in uh, there. there was like videos that were, you see if you could find them, apparently like him trying to interact with people and everyone like moving away from him sort of thing, like go away from me, you freak. So eight of the 15, like there were some changes made in discussions between the players and the RE, RFEF. Eight of the players kind of put themselves back up for eligibility for the World Cup and he picked three out of the eight to be in the World Cup squad. So of the 15, eight were like, oh, we're kind of happy now. Like, we'll, we'll be, we'll make ourselves eligible for the team. And well, then you want to win a World Cup. Three of those eight. Right, so he's like, beat it, basically. Mm. Essentially. And as well as that, along with the 15 players that sent in the email, there were, I think, two or three other players, one of which was, I think, the captain, and another one was, I think, the woman, that one player of the tournament, who didn't participate in this kind of group mutiny, but... I think share their support for the other players. What a shit show! Tough titties though, right? Like they fucking got the job done. So is he? A, is it? Is he a shit coach? And they're just so good, or is it? Well, now he's not going anywhere, right? You're like, oh not. Jesus, what a nightmare! Can you try to find some just things of him getting narbrad by the team? Yeah, yeah. And so also, who one. was the guy that kissed that girl on the oh, lips? Oh, <laughs> the head of the football which federation, was, which yeah. was inappropriate. But they were both like fucking relax. It's all good. Even the chick. Oh really? Yeah. Well, I think she came out and said something like it wasn't... Didn't she come out being like, I didn't like it? Yeah, she said she didn't like it, but she also said like it wasn't a huge deal. She was no, like, but like, know, I literally just read something where she was like, it was a, it was like a, a moment of like affection, but not, she was like, it was completely like, a, what's the word I'm looking for here? Like non-sexual, fucking yeah, platonic. It was all above Because even he, he was like, bro, what the fuck? Like, I mean, again, is it kind of European? They're always kissing each other on the cheek anyway. Like, you just go on one more. And I, mean, I, I, don't, I don't have an answer for you because I'm not European. That's what I, I mean. I don't know I'm if not, that's going to shock anyone, Spanish, but dude. I'm not Spanish. I don't know. I'd need a Spaniard to let me know. But is, is, is kissing on the lips kosher? Yes or no? I don't know. Look, I don't I have no idea. I don't think that it's generally like, you know, let's just kiss on the lips no matter what. It seemed like it was a. Very European uh, moment of unbridled joy. Was who? Can you get up? Who the uh, is this? Was the Spanish royal family member? Was she wearing the red? Was she in red? I think there was the Spanish royal. There was a member of the Spanish royal family, maybe a princess or something that was up there who looked like a vibe. Why wouldn't she have been in red? She's a fucking Spanish. Uh, Yes, Spanish queen Letizia and her infant daughter Sophia were there. Are you talking about hot here as a vibe? No, I'm just like, like, look like a vibe, and I just compare them to the dorks in the English royal family. I'm like... Yeah, well, they're all like inbred and shit, aren't they? <laughs> like, you know. Oh, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Look at that. That's just a cool... Don't you reckon she looks cool as fuck? Yeah, she does. I didn't realise Spain had queens and shit. Mm, King yeah. and queen, yep. They've hang on. They've held on. They've, 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 and they've, is that the princess there? That would be the princess. Hectic. Assuming it works the same way. Look at the coaches in there. He's getting in the thick of it. He doesn't look like... Look at the coach. It doesn't look like he's been flu. Yeah, that bald, baldy in the front. He's the one that kissed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's the one that kissed the thinger. Apparently, the English royal family didn't attend or members didn't attend because there was an emergency meeting 
That's what Ella was telling me this morning. There was an emergency meeting that uh, King Charles put on because they want to shore up the future of the monarchy or they're worried about the future of the monarchy or something. Listen. It's very Thursday chat. Yeah, know. well, it is very Thursday chat, but it's also like what you can't send one fucking rep over. That's what I was thinking. Where's the rep? You don't get one single rep. Give them a crown and get them Particularly when the Spanish, Spanish queen's yeah. up there doing the damn thing. Yeah. Where are the reps at? Give me some regal fucking rep getting out of here. 100%. I'd be cut. I'd be devo. So even send one of the, the, the princes that are like five. Get him a chaperone. Get George over. over here. Do a job. Start him early, mate. Boy, listen, he's, he's, he's signed up for a life of service. Is that, what's Andrew doing? <laughs> so uh, he's not. He's probably doesn't have much going on. <laughs> or he'd be. He'd have plenty of time, wouldn't he? Well, they're still hiding him. Well, you yeah, know, he might. <laughs> maybe that was what the meeting was about. They didn't know where he was. <laughs> Um, yeah, so the BBC said this about uh, William specifically, Prince William, his decision not to attend. The BBC said, It's understood he made the decision to avoid making the long-distance flights for a very short stay in Australia. The Prince has made tackling climate change one of his priorities and is believed to be concerned about the impact of such a journey. Oh, fuck off. That is one of the great loads of shit. He just cannot be asked. Like, the first part of that sentence is true. Long flight, not there for long, can't be fucked. Mate, you're flying... In, like, luxury. Don't tell me you can't go and sit in a room for fucking 14 hours. Like, that's essentially what it is. You can walk around. I'm sure he gets a fucking his own flight. No, he's worried about the carbon footprint, mate. That's what he's worried about. Yeah. Carbon. Carbon. Well, fucking fly, fly cattle class, mate, with the rest of us. Exactly. Hop into fucking economy. Wear a little mask. No one would notice. Get a wig on. Wig, mo. No one would have any clue, no. any no idea. Poor from England, that's why you lost. Sif shit. Well, it's one of the many reasons why, it's why you lost. lost. Sucked in England. Sucked in. Losers. Um, congrats to France, uh, Spain. Spain. And, <laughs> and, yes, and the Tillies. Oh, did you see the um, Tillies, like, they got a key to the city of Brisbane? Now, I don't know why Brisbane feel like they, like, oh, is that, that now? River Stage or whatever. Is what that, is River Stage? Riverside? Riverston? I thought they looked at River Stage. I don't know what River Stage is. But do we, like, are they now obli obligate, like, do they get a, a key for It's just for like an outdoor entertainment venue. River do they Stage. get a key from every major city? Like, why the fuck did Brisbane think they run the show here? I know that was where their, like, fan day was. I think it really peaked, though, when Nicky Webster came out and sang Strawberry Kisses to all the girls. Oh, because that's their team song. I've is been, it? Yeah, mm. that's why she came out. Is that the team song? Because I've been missing your Strawberry Kisses. Is so, that the team song? Yes. So 10 out of the 23 women in the World Cup squad are from Queensland, which is maybe why it was Brisbane. And they're big Nikki fans. Is that... I was like... Were they, That's why she was there. It's not as random as you yeah. might think. Okay, that makes it a little... Well, it makes Although it having her and her song as like your anthem, so to speak, is random. Well, I wonder whether it's ironic. Like it's sort of a little bit like this is a, this is a stupid song and that's why we like it sort of a thing as opposed to it being like... Or do they like the song? I think that's like, guys would do that ironically, but I reckon chicks would do it ironically too. Maybe. Don't know. Well, good on you. Listen, I'm happy, I'm good, happy to see, good to see Nikki still getting into her work. Yeah. Did she, did she play any of uh, uh, new hits? She got any new songs? Or is this All like I Nikki heard Strawberry of, Kisses. Does Nikki have any albums coming out? Uh, I'll have a look. Is she still doing the damn thing or is she? Surely not. Surely not. How, much, how many reality shows do you reckon Nikki Webster's been on? Like, I'd have to bet. Is she prolific? I, no, I don't know, dude. I'm just thinking, like, she's a perfect candidate for, like, hey, do you want to be on Dancing with the Stars? Hey, do you want to fucking try out for, like, Celebrity Big Brother? Or she, Mars Singer. Mars she did Singer. release an album in 2020, her first since 2004. Fucking hell. Oh, she's made a comeback. Well, 2020. What well, was it called? And it's, also, it's called Girls, and it does not have its own Wikipedia link to the page, which probably tells you Tough. how much about that album. It Tough. didn't It didn't. Chart What's she doing Australia? with herself these days? Just doing that. She's been on, uh, as Imagine you said, so, some, yeah, Last a few singer? different one. Uh, Is that show still on? That's the worst show on television. I'll, I'll have you know, but uh, got some reality credits to it. Yeah, there. she's done like some random shows. Like she's been on Thank God You're Here, and she's been on The Chasers. I don't know. She's been on would that be? Much. Would that be the first? And look, I don't, I'm, listen, I don't want this to be taken the wrong way. I'm proud of my Tillies. I love what they've done. I've, they've inspired the nation. 
Would that be the first key to the city for fourth place of all time? If you were to just to like... Yeah, potentially. And again, I'm, I'm going to echo your sentiments here. What they've done is incredible and was like nothing we've ever seen, right? Out did Kath on the TV, right? Mm. The nation was up and about for them. But I did hear on the radio, they're like, now people are working out what else to do to celebrate them. And I'm like... See, I, know. I don't think that we... Sh- this is my opinion, okay? And everyone's entitled to theirs, but this is, this is mine. I don't think that we should just abandon our ruthless pursuit of excellence yep. as like a standard for the nation. Yeah. The gold standard. Yeah. Like now I want to win it. We adhere to the gold standard. Yep. We now, need to win it. Now, if you want to acknowledge how much they did for the nation in terms of interest and fucking eyeballs and all that shit, great. But they, did, they got fourth. So let's not pretend like they won the World Cup. No. That's all I'd say. It's and terrific. that might be, you might say that's ruthless of me. And maybe it is. But... But I, I don't want. I don't want to. I don't want to just start setting this fucking standard where, like, you know, near enough is good enough. No, because it's not. No, it's not. You know what I mean? Oh, it'd be like saying, "Oh, well, we we got out of the pool stage in the fucking rugby world cup." Like, no, 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 no. Win it or you're lost. I think what you want really is to have men and women hold themselves to the same standard of excellence across the board. One hundred percent. If the men get to the semi final of the fucking soccer world cup we're up and about hot heavy horny and they get fourth great that was a really fun experience you did fucking well, you did well but you didn't win you didn't win so let's not pretend like you did well like, i'm not gonna like do you get a key to every city in the country for not winning it yeah like i mean the ashes they need to get we, funding that's what that's that's what their prize should be is fuck loads of money just pumped into them so we can win the fucking thing <laughs> Pound it in, and then we can win. And then you, then we'll start talking fucking keys. Oh, key to the country. Alex Volkanovsky, pound for pound champ on the planet. Arguably best fighter, best one fighter of the across all, all divisions. He can't buy a key. No. They won't sell him one. No. So you don't get one for fourth. I'm sorry if that sounds ruthless. I, and you know what? I'm, I'm going to stop apologising. No, don't. That's all right. We, there's nothing wrong with having standards. Ruthless pursuit of excellence. That's what, that's what we're about here. We are. I love that we retained the ashes, but we didn't win them, so you didn't do well enough. Yeah, you didn't get a ticket tape parade for that. No, you don't. What, are we going to fucking sp- streamers and keys for a draw? No. I don't think so. We, listen, I we'll, don't we'll, think so. we'll use it in arguments against the Poms because they're a bunch of fucking weak dogs, but... Well, the reality is the ashes are back in Australia, and that's, that means something. But it, know this, it was a draw, and there'll be no parades. No, no parades. And that's why there wasn't one. We wouldn't have allowed it. No. Um... So congratulations. Hey, congratulations. Loved it. And love the Tillies now. Like, as in, they are now fully entrenched and ingrained. In and like, now we look to Tokyo, no, rather, Paris next year We ho- with bated breath? Yeah, dude. My breath's baited. I don't even know what that means, but it well, is. Well, no, we said this the other day, right? Oh, should we do? Like, uh, a bait. Yeah, a baited mm. breath. Is it, is it actually with a baited breath or baited breath? I know we literally just did this, and this is, our, this is a problem with our memories generally, but like... I feel yeah, like we didn't do this that long ago. No, it was uh, like it was literally like within three episodes. I would say no, it is bated breath, but that's just a shortened version of a yeah, bated. Sweet, um, perfect. Yeah, sweet. so we watch with bated breath. With bated breath, quickly. And this, I don't know if this, I don't know how much to read into this, right? But I did read it again in the paper, and it could have been a Danny Wides, or it could have been a Buzzy Roth. I'm not sure, but either way, real men's women's weekly vibes. Nathan Cleary and Mary Fowler. Spotted enjoying an ice cream together. Really? Now, they're both sponsored by Adidas, and they were maybe doing a function, but like... Mm. But ice cream is... You have an ice cream with someone, that's say, that's saying something. That's saying something. You may as well be holding hands. Unless they're doing an ice cream commercial... Then that's something. They're essentially dating. Yeah. Yeah. What do you... What, that's a you, smooch, if basically. You're, well, it's the culinary... It's a culinary smooch. Yeah. You're sharing an ice cream? It's... You know what it is? It's... It's the human version of that dog movie where they fucking share the pasta and they get really close. Lady in the Tramp. Lady in the Tramp. Because yeah, no one's sharing a piece of spaghetti. That's lame as shit. But if you're sharing an ice cream, maybe you got double, triple scoops, you've gone out of your way. It's a date. Well, now I will say this because it wasn't clarified in the article. I don't know that they were literally like licking the same ice cream. 
No, no, but no, no. They were just going to get ice cream together. Well, maybe they could, yeah, but they didn't to get a cup each. They, they might be sharing it. She, is she having some of his? Try some of this. Is she trying some? Yeah. Did he get different flavors from her because she wasn't sure what to get? And he was like, well, you get that and I'll get this we can share. Now, that'd be a fucking rugby league. We haven't got a fucking power couple, do we, at the moment? Not that I'm aware Have of. Have we got a sporting power well, couple? Well, you got Alyssa Healy and Mitch Stark. Yeah, but they've had their time in the sun. They're we need older. someone new. They're older. You know, David Warner and Candace and shit, older. We need young Gen Z. We need a TikTok power couple. Yeah, they're too old. Far too old. Mary Fowler, 20. Cleary. Mary Fowler, like next big thing in world football. Nathan Cleary, one of the fucking greatest players to have come along in the last however many years. Like Generational. Generational. Well, two generational talents. Two. Yeah. Although she does live in England, plays for Man City. I don't know how like, – is, is Nath about that long distance work? Probably not. He's probably into fucking – and he's the king of Penrith or prince of Penrith or whatever you want to He's not like. leaving Penrith, is he? Not anytime soon. So um, Steph Catley, who is vice-captain for the Tillies, obviously, is dating Dean Buzanis, who's an Australian playing goalkeeper for Reading in the UK. Now, David. I just David. Want to David. Just David. No, 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 David. 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 What are you implying? What are you saying there? I'm um, just. Are you implying power couple? Options. Are you saying a power some couple? fucking rando I've never heard of? Play for Reading, and 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 backup goalkeeper. Like, what are we talking about? Backup. That's not a power couple. That's just a couple. That's just a. That's a two. That's a normal couple. That many, happen to play sport. How many fucking back-to-back premierships has that Reading goalkeeper won? I don't think he's had any. No offense, and no again, offense. no offense to the to the Reading goalkeeper. Happy to have love, but and Mary love Fowler and like- stole the hearts of the nation, David and Nathan Cleary is generational. Gone fucking two from two prams. Straight Can't play Origin back. to save his no, life. No, he's but that's no. Not the listen, point. he's a great he's a great club footballer. Oh, he's a phenomenal. Well, great. he's he's almost he's the club he's footballer. the club footballer, and then he also is good when he plays for Australia. Origin. Don't worry about it. But, but I'm talking about I'm talking about power couple front of women's weekly front man, of like, yeah, yeah, who's like GQ who or whatever or like, it's called. You know, they're like slumped over each other in some like, you know, tasteful are we ru- but slightly are we- sexy photo shoot. I'm not ruling out Vogue Australia either. Stella Mag, you see Braith on the cover down the weekend look very hot. But I mean, you tell me Stella Mag aren't hitting up Mary Fowler and Nathan Cleary. He's got his shirt off mm. and then she's like, there's a yeah. soccer ball in there. He's holding that. She's holding a 100%. football. Now, now, now. He's wearing her gloves. Why is that happening? That's yeah. a that's a fucking cracking photo shoot. Mate, writes itself. Now I'm looking into the future. Better homes and gardens. At home with the Clearies. Yes, exactly. Okay? Cooking with the Clearies. Cooking with the Clearies. But she's obviously not taking his last name. It's Listen, no, you know. Okay, at home with the Cleary Fowlers. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? What are you cooking? What Australia's are you Australia's sporting power couple. Mary, what Mary they reeks cook? of like composting and like a nice little veggie garden. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, Nathan's particular about what he likes to he's eat. Got so like, he likes to do all the cooking in the house. And she's like, sometimes I want to do it. He's got his own barbecue out the back. It'd be Argentinian one. Yeah, you know, it's one of those real fucking sick ones. Because he's also into barbecuing because like they're actually really sweet and settled at life. He's not just about fucking TikTok and shit. Yeah. Although they got huge followings. Mary Fowler also reeks of someone that does pottery. Absolutely, she does pottery. Well, there's obviously, and you know, also she's like, she's Papua New Guinea and Eddie, so I wouldn't rule out that maybe there's some sort of local dish that she likes to whip up as well. Okay, now we're talking. You know what I mean? We're yeah. getting some sort of... Uh, when family's coming over on a Sunday afternoon, bang, Mary's in there whipping up a beautiful traditional, traditional cuisine. Traditional Papua New Guinean cuisine. Nathan's sitting there just smiling yep. over the backyard. That's what I mean by power couple, David. Not yeah. some fucking rando from Reading, mate. Yeah. Come on. Fuck me dead. I mean... Jesus. Cooking with, the, with the, just the generic... Sporting couple or whatever, like what are they? Is what he cooking they goalkeeping gloves? Like yeah. what are we talking? What are we about? doing here? Oh, he's making gravy with some gravox. Like that's all boring. You know? Oh, oh, we're just doing a roast chicken. Boom. Lame. He sounds like a sort of guy that puts his fucking vegetables in the microwave, and that's all he does. Puts that's what it'd plate. be. Oh, we're poaching Lazy. eggs. Remember, Astro used to poach eggs. He'd wrap them up in plastic and then yeah. put them in the microwave. Probably cooks his cooked tuna. You know what I mean? Yeah. Cooked his cooks his smoked tuna. Shout the street. Like let's just say, just like don't come back with that shit. Don't. We need a power couple. We need one. And if it's not going to be Mary and Nathan, we need someone else, but I want it to be them. I'd love it to be Mary and Nathan. There's no other real sporting power couples doing the rounds, is there? We did have Elise Perry and Matt Tamur at one point. Mm. wouldn't say power couple because, unfortunately, Matt Tamur playing for the Wallabies and it just wasn't as, like, exciting enough. It was It was, It was. was a It was a power couple. Not the power couple. Not they were, like, no, they were a, uh, they were a power they couple. They were. It was an imbalanced power couple, I think. You, a power couple, you need to have probably a bit of balance. We didn't see a whole lot of Matt Tamur. It wasn't a public facing. No, but and also, but like, Elise Perry, 
tippity top of the spear. Matt Tamua, unfortunately, the Wallabies aren't that good. So, like, it wasn't. If he was the best player in the world, different story. Sure. You need to have a good balance. Like the like the legal the legal fucking lady. When was the last power couple we had? This is gonna Steph do my Rice, head. Steph Rice, Quade Cooper. Oh, Steph Rice, Quade Cooper was Steph Rice, one. Eamon Sullivan. Uh Cole Co- Chalmers and Emma, Emma McEwen. Mc- that was a big is that one. Her name? Emma McEwen or Kate yeah. McEwen? Emma McEwen. Yeah, Emma McEwen. That was a biggie. That was a big one. That was Emma huge. McKeon? Yeah. yeah. Emma McKeon. Big every four years, anyway. Yeah, Cole Chalmers has moved on. Um Oh yeah, Cole's over it. Cole's over it. And McHugh and Cody Simpson's a big one. It's not a. It's not. It's not. It's not, not a small one. one. No, it's not because he's. But it's not. It's sporting power couple. But he does. He's power, got a, He's he's big. Yeah, but his power resides in his star power, not his sporting power. Because like he you knows. We, t- we were talking about Cody Simpson the other day. I'm like, I couldn't name a song he sung. Not no, not one. one. Not, not a one. single no, song. No. He almost got big for no reason at all. Well, no, but also, like, when he was big, it was, like, not so... Like, you wouldn't have been listening to him anyway. But, again, I know what you mean. It wasn't... It wasn't he wasn't singing bass. He it was betting... He, he's, he's betted high-profile broads. Mm. Yes, he has. That's yeah. almost what he's famous for. Well, here in Australia, no one knows a song of his. But, like, would Ella know a song of his? No, she, she has no idea. No, oh, really? She, like, she just, she, she's the one she brought it up. She's like, you can't name a song he's singing. Dude, Steph doesn't even know. Steph on the weekend was like, who's Logan Paul? I'm like, you don't know. What's actually Ella doesn't know Logan Paul either. I went to explain she's the Dilly Dennis thing with her, to her and what's going on. And she's like, explain it to me. I'm like, so you know Logan Paul? She's like, no. And I'm like, I'm not going to bother. Yeah, if I can't. I'm not going to bother. She the goes, why not? I go, here. because you don't know anyone That's that I'm talking crazy about. that Ella doesn't either. Because I was like, like, I don't expect you didn't even like know much, but I feel like they're so fucking omnipotent in the world. Like how can you to get- To men potentially. Yeah, maybe. Cause there'd be that, they could sit us down and go, do you know this girl? Do you know this girl? Do you know this girl? And there'd yeah. be a lot of no's there. I know. Potentially. Yeah. I was shocked by that. And I respected the hell out of it at the same time. Just that you're a, a bit like- you Probably are a nice, probably a nice uh, <whistles> shift into the, what's going on with that. Though you don't know, punters and dribblers, Logan Paul facing Dylan Dennis, who used to train with Conor McGregor. He's like a world champion jiu-jitsu fighter. fighter. Yeah. They're going to be boxing soon. And Dylan Dennis, known to be uh, a bit of a fuckwit in terms of like he doesn't he doesn't care what he says. He He's just, one of the most un like. There's a, there's a lot of like back and forth fighters will say to each other shit like you know when they're preparing for a fight. He has no. He doesn't even have the slightest. Uh, Modicum of respect for his own. Like no. he doesn't. He will say literally anything, and he basically he's just gone after. Fuck. He's just gone after Logan Paul's misses the whole time, which is brutal as fuck. Just and posting her with people, with like previous partners and yeah. shit. Yeah, and I heard him being interviewed, and he was like, "Listen, I'm just. These are all on the internet. Like I'm not fucking. These aren't like leaked photos. They're not like sex. They're not like uh, revenge porny sort of. No, shit. no. He's like, it's, it's not. It's not her ex boyfriend sending through videos and shit. No, no, no. no, no. It's like, it's and I'm not, that's not me trying to justify it. It's fucking ruthless as all hell. But it's, it's just like, what he said. But it's like never. Uh, he's got like, he's just got this never ending supply. It would seem because people of, would have started sending them after a while, right? Like that's how you know. Mm. Once he started posting a couple, people would have been like, what about this one? But what there about seems this to be one? like a lot of people. It's into the 50s, I think. Is it? Yeah. 57 was the last Different. count. Different. Yes. 57 was the last count, I believe. And that's and not like, just, and just like, his chonged all of them, but it's just no, no. like... I'm just saying that's... I think that's what the number was. And he... They're all like... They're all like relatively... They've got profiles, I think. Yeah. And, and I think he got a cease and desist from Logan Paul. Well, that's the report. That's well, the Logan Paul tried to get him kicked off. Twitter. Apparently, that's what he said. That's what Dylan is saying. He's like, "You're fucking." Yeah, it probably, probably isn't true. So that's an it's, it's another shit show fight though. What it's a, a YouTube sh- fight. shit show! It's a shit show. It's funny how this is. just... You don't all. get into bed with Dylan Danis. You don't go anywhere near that bloke. He's bad news. Yeah. yeah. And if like, yeah, you play with fire sort of stuff. Like this guy's an animal. To yeah. Do that. That's yeah. so lowbrow. It's so fucking. It's hectic. so lowbrow. It's so they only just got engaged. Got engaged like a month ago. I know. And it's he's just fucking and he's ruthless. Just going for it. He's crossed that line in the sand where it's like you don't go after a man's family. No, and he's exactly. Just and he's just gone straight all in there. the way after it. It's really fucked up. Um, but again, though, lay with dogs, you get fleas. Is that the thing? Yeah. Yeah. 
you invited that guy into your life. Yeah. He was always going to do something He was always going to do something fucked up. Like, and he's a fucking, he's a dead shit, right? He's a dead shit. Anyway, that's a bit of fun. Did you see Sean O'Malley's fight? Oh, I didn't, but I saw him win. Bro, that was good. He fucking smoked him with that punch. That right hand. Mm. Just like... It would, it would feel so fucking pure. Like, not to... Like, I don't want to punch someone, but if you're training for this exact thing, like this thing you've just worked over and over and over and over again, and then just, boom, it's first chance he has... The guy overextends and he just cracks him. Mm. It was horny stuff. Bantamweight world champ. Yep. There's a good photo of like comparing the two. Him and Connor. Bang! Bang. Fuck me Jesus dead. Jesus Christ. No, of him like have you, when he's younger, he's like, you know, he's sort of like a teenager and he's holding all this cash in his hand. He oh, yeah, like he shaved absolute, his eyebrows off. Yeah. So he shaved his eyebrows off for 50 bucks nine years ago. And he looks like, like an absolute nose. noob and now, yeah. and now look at him. Bang. Jeez, that's that quick good. stuff. Edward, when we do talk rugby league on the show. Rugby league? Rugby league. God's winter game? Drink it in, it's God's winter game. Oh, fuck, I'm ready for some of that. I'm not going to lie. I'm feeling it getting warmer. I went, to it, the, like, I went to the stadium yesterday, laid by the pool, Fucking glorious! Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna so fucking nice. I'm gonna spend company money and get myself a membership there. Um, no, just not. really excited for that. Uh, mm, rugby league, God's you can use your game. own money. Well, I will be using the money from the company. Uh, obviously, it'll be company expense, and I will wear none of it. <laughs> um, but some around the corner. Yep. Well, so me and Steph are even remarking this morning, uh, and you and I probably have as well. But just how. And I don't know if the God designed it this way, but like the season's perfectly timed where it's like, okay, over the cold now, give me warm. And then February comes in and I go, get me freezing again. Well, the, the seasons are perfectly timed for where we live. I don't know how people could live in seasonless climates where it's like just wet or dry. No. It's hot all the time. No, no, I don't know how you do that. I need, I like my cold. I like my getting warmer. I like my hot. Yeah. I don't like my human, but no. you, you get the point. You get the point. Now, anyway, when we talk about really, it's thanks to our good friends at KO. Um, KO get the seasons as well. KO get the seasons. They get the seasons. But they, get, they actually get all the seasons, and most places don't get all the seasons. Yeah, but they get all the seasons. They get all seasons, yeah. right? So they're, they're a platform for all seasons. And all sports. At least sports you want to watch. Yeah. Um, but we are talking rugby league here. I thought it was a really, really nice touch of class from the West Tigers, Eddie. I don't know if you saw this, but departing Luke Brooks, coming to Manly, can't wait for him to get here. They uh, they got him on the field before the game. Got him a Barbie. Thanks for your what service. What did they get him, Weber? I think it was a Weber. Uh, this cunt's been on a million dollars for like the last fucking eight years. Do you think he doesn't have a barbecue? Well, maybe they asked him what he wanted and he picked a barbecue. Maybe. You don't listen, Tom. Do you? You don't get someone a barbecue that has a barbecue. You just don't do that. But well, you wouldn't. But do you think maybe like? Oh, but you're saying okay. So you're saying the tiger, tigers. That's what the tigers, the tigers do. Well, like I mean, they've just sacked their like fourth coach in fourteen months. Like I mean, that barbecue. There's no way that barbecue's brand new. Don't you reckon that's a barbecue that like? It would be an old barbecue. It'd be maybe a sponsored barbecue. It was given. It's been used. It's old, and they've gone. Well, fuck. We need to clear out some of this. Bobby Pasco's old barbecue. Take this old thing. Yeah. Fucking spider webs all through it. Thanks looted, for coming. Rusted as shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's funnel webs in here. Thanks for your service, sort of stuff. Yeah. At least they got the W. They did get the win. By the Luke. skin of their ball sacks. Uh, it was a beef eater, not a Weber. A beef eater. Beef eater sounds like a sponsor. Is it a sponsor? Did they spend uh, any money on this thing for Luke? Probably. No not. way. It's like in um, it's like in uh, old school, and he re-gifts the bread maker to like the five year old, <laughs> and he's like, "I got you that." And he's like, "Oh yeah." He's like, "Here you go, kid." He's like, it's a bread maker. It's got three speeds. It's I can't find it as a sponsor. But okay, well that's what we're could waiting for. Could just be a friend. And that's the pause, punters and dribblers. Us staring at Dave, waiting Looking to see Dave, if there was a sponsor. Seeing if there was an answer, and there wasn't. Eddie, I obviously was not happy that Manly lost to the Warriors. No. Um, I wasn't happy that Charles Nickel Klugstad took out Ruben Garrick at the ankles and basically flipped him and piled drove him into the ground. Yeah, it was uncouth. It was uncouth, but I will say this. It's in the rules, and I 
you and I, I'm not happy how to play getting injured, but I, uh, and I love my Manly Seagulls. You might call us biased here all the time, but watch us not be biased now. It's in the rules. It was unfortunate. It's in the rules, but it's a weird rule. It's, that's a different point. Because it is a weird rule, it's but a weird it's rule. still it's a rule. Like if, if a player's in the air like that, you can take their feet out because it wasn't a kick. Because it wasn't a kick. Because the ball bounced. Because it hit the ground. Yeah. So he's he's just as high as he otherwise would be. Right, maybe higher. Anyway. Maybe higher. Possibly higher. He's possibly higher than he would be if he was going up for a kick. And but because it hit the ground before You're allowed to take directly them out. before, mm. you're allowed to take them out and fuck them up. Yeah. Weird rule. Mm. Really weird rule. I don't get the rule. But I but a, but a rule it is. So I was prepared to wear that one. Um, Sebes was like the season's on the line and his fucking calls. I'm like, I tend to feel like the season. Anthony, can I be honest with you? The season was is kind of Tony. Can I be honest gone. with you, mate? I think that if you think that the season was still on the line, you don't get it. Yeah. Now, you could argue that, well, you know, statistically, well, you know, there's a mathematical chance. And to the name of Jim Carrey from Dumb and Dumb, are you telling me there's a chance? Listen, I would see it differently. And again, if I can go back to what I was saying about the Matildas, fourth isn't good enough. Fucking limping into the eighth by the skinniest sack after a shit season's not good enough either. Like, no. yeah. Like, maybe we were mathematically a shot, but we, we're not a shot of anything. No, we wouldn't. We so why does it matter? Numbers. Now, it, it's... And, I mean, you'd have to fucking think. Like, we've had some unfortunate injuries. You know, we have had a lot of injuries this year. One, obviously, being Turbo, but, like, fucking a lot of forwards, a lot of big boys got injured through the season as well. Uh, but that's... We don't have enough depth to be able to cover that shit. And some teams that... Ha like, injuries are part of the season. Part of your fucking footy. And if you can't You're not going to go inju injuryless. Injury-free. No, you're not. You need luck. You absolutely need luck. But, like, if you can't cover you your injuries... You've got to create luck, mate. You've got to create your own luck. I'm too, unfortunately, it's been a shit year. And it's a. It's almost seems like a deflection trying to be like all pissed off in the commentary box. Like again, I, I can be, I understand you being like, mate, he fucking took Ruben out. What's going on. But like to try and use that as the, like, this is our season on the line. And this, it's like, bruh. I mean, there was calls that went our way in that game. There are calls that go this way and that way and every way in every game. Right. Like that one, I feel bad for Ruben, dear friend of the show. Dear friend. See you at Shorty sometime soon, bro. If, when you recover. Didn't like, I didn't like seeing you in that vulnerable position. Didn't like it made me feel hurt. vulnerable. Do you know what I wanted to do, Eddie? I was like, if I could, I would like want to switch myself out so that I could take the pain away from Ruben. I wanted to be over there with his head in my lap. Lap. I wanted making to make him under feel there, better. Trying to catch him. Stroking his forehead, rubbing his fucking yeah. high cheekbones yeah. but oh, I'm yeah, not going to okay. sit here and use it as an excuse for not making the finals we've had a fucking up and down year sometimes we played great there were times when we were on and you're like oh the boys have come to play here 100% but, but we haven't deserved to make the top eight no and that's just the god honest truth and it's because Tom and, uh, Tom and I punters and dribblers we don't talk shit we're very honest okay we never go over the top we never are uh, realistic with our expectations no. uh, we never measured verbally. we're measured as shit and the reality is, Sincere. we're not a top eight side this year. We're no. just not. We're not. We haven't played like one since like fucking the third round. So, I'm sorry, Tony, but I think you need to woo up, bro. And, there's, bigger, and there's way bigger fish to fry. Yeah, you need to get this fucking team humming, bro. Because like, we were, I'd argue we're actually, we've gone back from where we were last year. Obviously, the last seven games. No, 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 no. There's no, there's no argument to be made. We have. The last seven games last year, Jersey Saga, sure, not great. Pre that. Pre that. We were, we were. I'm pretty sure in the fucking top eight. Um, but it just feels like we have gone back a little bit and I'd really... Seems I'd like, you know what I'd it's like? Just, it's, it's just this signing of fucking players that don't make sense. Wouldn't mind like, to see some elite honesty. Yeah. Instead of fucking making out like, you know, we've been robbed. Yeah, we haven't been robbed, bro. We haven't been robbed. We haven't been fucked. We got beaten by Penrith last year. We were coming uh, last week. We were coming first. Had a sure. crack. We had Threw a crack. The footy around. Should have won. Fucking footy. Footy around. We got some calls against us. Sure, we did, but we didn't win. Mm. And then the same thing this week. We let that that fucking try that they scored after Ruben got taken out was soft as baby shit. So 
Listen, love the boys. Love the boys. Love the effort levels. But love the boys. You know, we've got to call it as we see it, not our season. Not our rugby league season. Pains me to say it. Pains me to say it. But we suck when compared to other teams of substance. And it is what it is. Now, like, I'd love to be sitting here being like, geez, we had a slide this season, but we arrested it. We turned things around and we've started defending, like, you know, a proper rugby league side. And, you know, we're showing a lot of attacking prowess and... You know, we go up to Townsville and get a brave, gritty win like the Sharks. Like, I'd love to be able to say that, mm. but we can't. No. Um, no, we can't. I, there's a part of me, especially, like, when your team's fighting out, like, what's the top eight, Dave? Top eight. Just get uh, the ladder up? Yep. Um, so, like, right now you've got the bottom. So you've got uh, Sharks, Raiders, Knights, Rabbitohs in the bottom four of the top eight. And then Cowboys, Roosters. Eels are out of it, you would assume. Mm. Well, they might actually literally be out of it. Um, well, they've got Penrith this week and then the bye. So they okay. have to pretty much beat Penrith if they want to chance. they hump them. So let's, just say, let's say Roosters, Cowboys still in with a shot, theoretically. Uh, but, like, realistically, you know that Rabbitohs aren't winning the comp, Raiders aren't winning the comp, Knights aren't winning the comp, Cows aren't winning the comp, Roosters aren't winning the comp. Like, they're not. Roosters, you know what? There's a crazy fucked up world where the Roosters could make the final and they've got such a good team that's been playing so poorly that they yeah, could. But, like, but I, could see, I could see the Roosters, I can see the Rabbitohs falling out. Yeah. I can see the Roosters going up. I can see the Raiders losing week one. I can see... The Roosters, if they get in, I think if they played the Sharks, they lose week one. Then you've probably got the Sharks against the Warriors. I think the Roosters or, could beat the Sharks. Hey? The Roosters could beat the Sharks. No, I don't think so. so this they is, played all right on the weekend. This They're is playing kind of the, good now. The predicament for these bottom teams in the top eight, Roosters are the Tigers this week. They should win. Uh, bunnies have a bye, which really helps them. Roosters, Bunnies, last round. Is to get in. Is pretty much to get in. Um, that's you know. What's think, the points differential? Thinking that the Knights keep winning because they play the Dragons. Well, they're both going to be on the same points. Points. same points. So um, Roosters, Roosters, Bunnies last game of the season to make it. But Assuming. that could also again Cowboys have Dolphins this week and Penrith in the last round. If they can get a win over Penrith to and they rest their players, Cowboys have a better points differential for the Roosters. Uh, than the Roosters. So if oh. Roosters win and Cowboys win, Cowboys Shit. will go in. So what I wanted to so say, it's, it's fucking all over the shot, right? But there is a, there's an element of now two rounds to go, a bit of like sweet relief where I'm just like, I don't need to worry about finals anymore. Like, you know what I mean? Like where we were like fighting it, can we, can't we, can't we, can't. Now it's like, because the, it's the hope that kills you, right? It's a like, oh, can we do it? And then just like getting fucking your heart broken. But so right who, now I'm just like, okay, what, what was the game before the Penrith? Roosters. What do you mean? So like it was over then. Yeah. When we lost to the Roosters, it was that over. was it. Yeah. We've lost the last three games on the trot. Yeah. And Seabold's like, oh, we're well, fucking season on the line. No, it's not. No, we lost to the Roosters. We won the game before the Roosters. I can't remember who the fuck that was. Um, maybe the Dragons that we almost lost to them. <laughs> yeah. it's like, you know, it was just yeah, like, dragons. you know, sometimes you just need a fucking I'll tell you where the hope lies for you guys. Um, Eels play Penrith this week. They'll lose that, but then they have a bye last round. If you guys beat the Dogs and the Tigers in the last round, you'll finish ahead of the Eels. That'd be nice. That would be nice. That'd be nice. I'd need that. I don't need it. It'd be nice. Mm. We can still get to, what, 29 points? Mm -hmm. So we, we, we could fucking... The cows and the roosters and the eels lose all their games. Well, eels. Well, roosters, we could come ninth. Roosters are playing rabbitos, so one of them uh, have to win at least. Okay, well, so we could come tenth. Again, whatever. Are the, have the tigers locked up the spoon? Is that is that? Uh, no. Nah, so if the tigers manage to get a win out of playing you guys in the last round and playing the roosters, roosters this week, fuck, come on, tigers. Yeah, because I had the Dragons to finish last. I'd so love the nice. Dragons. It kind of seems like point. they'll need to lose both just because there's, what, 50 points difference. So who are the Dragons the playing? Dragons. Waz, they lose? Yeah, and then Knights in the last oh, round. Oh, so I they believe. lose both those games. Yeah. We just need the Tigers. The Tigers need to win two. One of which is against Manly. Well, I'm, I don't want the Dragons to come last that much. No, not that much. Not that much. Certainly not that much, Tom. Uh, Knights are good, though. Knights are looking good. I don't listen. Obviously, for I hate for reasons known, Some, yeah, so known, not known. For reasons mostly known, 
Tom and I are not big Knights fans this year, which yeah. is annoying because I like the Knights historically. Yes, historically. And I like seeing a full fucking McDonald Jones Stadium and bathed like in Bradman HD Best, light. And I like Bradman Caelan Best, Ponga. fucking ribbon and tearing, Ponga ribbon and tearing, Greg Marjorie ribbon and tearing. Like, I like watching that, but I don't this season for no. reasons known, mostly known. Yeah. But they are, they're a hot piece of rugby league ass at the moment. They are. Like, as much as I don't like them, I have to admit when I see a hot, sweaty piece of ass. Yeah. And the Knights are it right now. Yeah. Greg so, Marju, first fucking... First, second, first, and third. First half Hattie. Boss, boss, boss. Adam Clune. There were three wingers that in. scored first half hat tricks this week. Huh? Three wingers scored first half hat tricks this week. And then right. Greggy Marge. Again, I had him 13 plus tonight. Rando talked me out of it. We'll talk about that yeah, on, we about, about even on Wednesday. Even. I'm on um, uh, Bradman Best getting over again. Great probably going to turn... Um, listen, I'm not ruling out turning down Rando's mic this week for the whole show. Yeah, I know. Just beeping him. Daniel Saifidi apparently scored off an eight-tackle set. He did. So it was a seven-tackle set. I would imagine the ball went dead. Can't re- quite recall. And he scored. Trell's having a shocker. Or he had a shocker in that game. It's funny, right? Because Phil Gould talked that Gould shit. Phil Gould talked that shit, and but Phil, the wily old prick, must have seen something in the way look, look, in the way Latrell was playing. I don't know. Oh, no, he did, he'd barely come back from injury, like. But he, but why? That's such a big call, though. and it's sort of like out of the blue, like drive by. But it's it, like, and obviously, the argument was like, well, Trell's done heaps of shit, which is absolutely true, right? And we were the ones saying that. But he since has not then, been at his, his best. His form has been down, down, down. As in, you know, colds down, 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 down. Prices are down. Prices are staying down. Yeah. Sort of stuff. Yeah. Now, I don't think Latrell Mitchell is going to be down, down, form staying down forever, but he's having a barry of a fucking return from injury. He's had a barry. Well, he's obviously injured for nine weeks or whatever it was, but he's been no good since he came back. And yesterday, carrying on like a. Bit of a poor shop at times, then gets sent off. Well, that one, listen, seeing it in real time, it looked pretty fucking soft. Like, as in, it wasn't that big of an issue, but it's very trell to like, it's, and like to get like pissed off and do something fucking stupid. And Cody Walker actually does that. And it's clear the Rabbitohs need him firing because otherwise they're pretty limp. Yeah, well, dude. Like, put a, what put a, a line fall, through there. What a fall from grace for the Bunnies. Yeah. At the start of the year, Even just I remember Origin, saying to dude. Matty at Magic Round, I'm like, bruh, it's the Rabbitohs to lose this year. Obviously, I don't know what I'm talking no, about. No, you don't. Maybe Neither there was we. a little bit of like jinx in the air in, in regards to that comment. But they've been fucking dog shit ever since. And if they come up against the Rabbitohs last round and make the eight, which is looking like what's going to happen, they'll lose. Well, yeah, so Trell won't be playing uh, in that last round game unless he fights the charge and beats it. How long has he been? I think it's just a one-game suspension. Oh, but they've got to buy. Yeah, yeah, they got to oh. buy this week, so oh. um, that's that one. But, yeah, after 11 rounds, they were sitting at the top of the table. They had just beaten the Storm, the Broncos, and the Penrith in the three pe- previous weeks to that. I um, Wow. Damn. What's I happened? I don't know whether the, he should be suspended for a game for that. I think it's a fine. Yeah, but it's loading and shit, man. Yeah, I know. It's just it's fucking... It's like... It's it rugby league loading. I know. It wasn't that big of a deal. Like, it wasn't that bad. It was just that he was frustrated. I don't think it was that bad. I just think, like, he's he was a grumpy boy, pissed off. His team sucks. Put a line through them, obviously. They're done. But, I mean, ruling him out for the fucking... For the game? I don't know. You know, we are talking about that before. How, like, in NFL, you got to do something fucking bordering on, like on-field murder to get fucking suspended because they don't want to ruin the game for the fans. See, I'd love Latrell to the be arse. there against the Roosters last round. Like, if you have loading for something that's not that big of a deal, you should just be like, fine. What time is that game? The Roosters bunnies. Uh, it is 8 p.m. Friday night, 1st September. But yeah, Rabbitohs are fucked. Eels are fucked. They look so rank. Oh, no, nah, against the Roosters. I think the Roosters looked all right. Like, it was a bit poo-slingy, but like, they... Looked pretty good. Four points, mate. That line, yeah, just that line. so stupid. That line. Who ha- set that line? Shame on you, whoever set that well, line. No, that was don't. disgraceful. Thank you. That was a great line. Don't no, no shame, no shame. I loved it. Um, is there anything else really going on in the World Rugby League? Payne Haas signed. We already talked about that. The Tigers are ridiculous. Raiders just cannot win a game thirteen plus to save their life. It is fucking insane. Can't be done. Thirty six twenty four against the Dogs. 
Thank you, minus nine and a half. They're going to get pumped. I think they lose first round of the final. See you later. Are they guaranteed to make it? No, they're not. I think if anyone in the top eight is going to drop out, I think it could be the Raiders. Uh, they've got the Broncos this week. Well, it's got to be the Rabbitohs. And then they've got the Sharks. But if Rabbitohs beat the Roosters, they'll go on 32 points over the Raiders. So will the Knights. Again, it comes down to that Cowboys-Panthers game last round. If Cowboys win, then they'll knock the Raiders out. Because the Raiders, there's no coming back from their points difference at the moment. No, that's a fucking rogue, rogue uh, points differential. It's funny, like the biggest disappointments of the year, Eels, well, it's Roosters, number one. Then it's Cowboys, probably number two. And then the... And then the Eels. Even though the Eels are grand finalists, like obviously that's a massive disappointment. But the Roosters like have such a stacked side. Eels lost troops. Eels lost troops. Cowboys' biggest dis- no, Roosters' biggest disappointment com- comfortably. Then the cows and the eels. Because the cows were such a hot side last year. Yep. Yep. Knights shocking. The Titans just they don't do they they're underachieving. I think they're like thirteenth every year. Like. Yeah. Fucking something needs to change. Yeah, they need to get their fucking ass into gear, don't they? Do you think Knights t- making the finals is just not something I saw coming. No, it's not. No, it's not. Who have they got? Sharks this week, and then who? Who was that, sorry? Knights. The Knights have got the Sharks and then the Dragons in the final yeah, round. right. Interesting. So they're pretty much, they're going to beat one of those sides at the least, and then they're good. Mm. I think the Dogs have also been... Pretty disappointing this year. They have, but they were shit anyway. Like, yeah. they were shit last year. They got they some don't have players, a seven either. But they also got fucking heaps of injuries. And they don't heaps. have a seven. And they don't have a seven. Usman Khawaja signs with Fox Cricket. Fuck yeah, love that. Nice. Pursue a commentary career after he hangs up the boots. Who? Do you hang up boots in fucking <laughs> cricket? Who's hanging up boots? Well, no, I'm just saying Khawaja's uh, signed with Fox Cricket. Yeah, right. For when he does hang up the boots. But do you hang up boots? Bat. Hang up the bat. Hang or up the gloves. You hang gloves. up the gloves. Hang up the gloves. But then hang what if the you're a bowler? If you're a, if you're a you you're hang up, you hang up the bat. What you? if you're a bowler? You could hang up the boots if you're a bowler because they do wear bowling shoes. Are they technically boots? What are they called? Like, I think they call them boots. Also, David Warner signed as well. Well, he was already with KO and shit, wasn't he? That's right. Um, I love Usman Kawaja. That's a fucking great signing. Oh, so they're putting Uzi and Dave together. Well, they've signed them both. So what's their hosting team for the World... Oh, when's the World? When's the Cricket World Cup? It's like November. October, I think. October. Jesus, there's fuck. This is maybe the most sport-laden year I've ever had. Yeah, it's pumped. Uh, their it's hosting team for the World Cup. Brendan Julian, Mark Wall, Kerry O'Keefe, Brad Harden. Oh, so yeah, it starts the 5th of October, which is less than a week after the Grand Final. Oh. So roll straight in. Fuck yeah, dude. And when is the fuck yeah. Rugby Union World Cup starting? Every match of the Midcoming World Cup broadcast Fox Cell. Dude, uh, KO, you, dude. Fox ni- Cricket. 9th of September. That's like next two weeks. What do you like, make of... When's our first game? Jesus Christ. Our first game is the 10th of September at 2 a.m. Wow. What do you make of Eddie Jones <laughs> telling those journos to give themselves uppercuts? Ah, uh, fuck. Mate, Eddie Jones, look. They're apparently filming a doco. Like a, a, like a uh, the test style doco. So, like, it wouldn't surprise me if he's been told to fucking ham it up a bit for that. Cameras following him and shit. <laughs> Bro, you haven't won a single game since you've come back and coached. Like, you've got to expect people are going to be like, what's going on? And here? you've lost to B teams. And you've lost to B teams. And then you, and then you, your attack coach bails on the eve of the World Cup. And then you're, am I led to believe that Jason Riles of hard running front row rugby league forward fame is now the Wallabies attack coach? Or have they moved someone else into the attack coach and just brought Jason Riles in? Also, got it on good authority, Jason Riles, is pieced up. Um, not important, but well, who knows? It might it might have it might come into play at some point during the World Cup, having a huge, huge dick. It's not gonna hurt. It's well not, no. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I mean. No, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I don't I mean Eddie just like the worst, the worst press conference you ever had. Like again, you're sitting there getting really. He looked, he looked so cute. Like he was so small with his huge Akubra. Oh, I know. Shit. He was drowning in it. He was wasn't drowning he? in he it. Was that thing wasn't fitted his, very well. well like how, you know, you like. He almost looks like he's off to his first day at school. I know. Somehow, it was, that, it was which fucking, was like, I was like, oh, this is sort of. Get, I'm getting icks here. Yeah, it's a bit. It was a bit Magoo cute. Yeah, it was like Magoo. Yeah, it was literally. It was literally. 
Boy Scout first day of school. Yeah, orienteering camp. Orienteering camp, camp, that sort of shit. Yeah. But then he's like this feisty little kid who's like fucking screaming at you. But that's also it, right? Like he's a real lippy, like he's like a really angry little kid. Small man syndrome. Yeah, I think so. But like, you know, one of those ones where like, I wonder if he can actually punch on or whether he's just all bark. I reckon you have a crack, but I reckon you can just push him over. Yeah, that's the thing. (laughs) Yeah, 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 yeah. Hold, is that on The Simpsons where you hold the head and they're like swinging? Yes, <laughs> yeah. like that. Um, but but it, I like it. In Eddie, we, I, I like, like him. him. I can't I help like but like him. him. And in Eddie, we trust. In Eddie, we trust. Why we, not? We right? talk about that. Who's our first game? Is it Paraguay or Fiji? No, nah, Georgia. Georgia. Good one to start with. Yeah, a good one. Blow the cobwebs out. Portugal, you might be thinking of. I don't know the fuck I'm thinking of. Um, We've got Fiji, Portugal, Wales, Wales Georgia. Georgia. And do the top two go through? Yep. You fuck me. You know, we've got to beat Fiji. Basically, that's going to be that's the big game. That's the that's the that's the that's the is, huge game, which is where we're at. Um, but yeah, Eddie, Literally. you can't come back and win zero games and then be like, "This is so negative." It's so negative. It's like, well, what the fuck's there to be positive about? Can't we want a game? Yeah, under, but like again, are you wanting to drop the standards down to that level? Whereby yeah. it's all good to lose to B-sides and, and that's sweet. Yeah. Is that where we're at is now? Is that where we're at? Did James O'Connor get picked for that World Cup side or is he gone as well? Um, I'd be shocked if he did. I didn't see him in any of the four games he's played. It's just funny because it's a real like turnover. Hooper gone, Cooper gone. Yeah. Foley not in there. I don't think so. No. Nah. I don't mind him going with Young. How old would Foley be? be f- He'd be my age probably, 34. Yeah, okay. He is 33. Is he? Not is he, Bernard. Huh? Not is he, Bernard. Is he? Don't worry. Eddie said is he. Oh. Oh. That was, just a, refl- that was just a that reflex was action. Shaver. I'm sorry. That was just He's going hard at this. Did Nick reflex. Phipps get picked? Nick. Friend of the show. Fanger. Fanger get, Fanger get the nod? Well, I think he's... We've got to get Fanger back on here. While we're still on rugby league, I know he bounced away from it. Um, but we bounce back. But we bounce back. Uh, Corey Parker of David Clement punched him in the face in Origin or something. Disrespect him. He's obviously he's an Australian Queensland legend. Corey Didn't he Parker. tell him to fuck off? Tell him to fuck off or something. Um, Corey Parker, well, it's a bit of middle third fame. He wants, or at least he's floated the idea of each team having a Joker card. I believe he floated this on SEN. Shout out to SEN. Uh, our interview with Liam Knight, now on our YouTubes. And we're speaking to the one and only Mark Boris this week. Shout out to Mark for coming on. You'll be able to hear that on SEN Tuesday, 8 p.m. Then on the app. Um, Corey Parker has mused about the idea of having a each team having a Joker card where... You can play it at any point you want during the season except the origin period, and then it means that you have to win by... If you win by 10 or more points, you get four competition points for a win, and if you don't win by 10 or more points, you get zero competition points, even if you win. You need to announce that you are playing your joker when they do team lists, so team list Tuesdays. you got to announce that. Yeah. We were saying we think it would be better to just play it on the game day because that makes it way more like... Oh, that actually makes it look a little bit more interesting. And I don't. I just don't know where this has come from and who called for it it's and why a, we're even considering it. Yeah, I don't think. We're is this just? A, is this just a talking point to just to you know try and see us through to the end of the season? Sort of interesting, or does he, is Cosa legitimately putting this? It's forward? it's got a bit of fucking bring back the bears about it in terms of like a storyline where it's like we're just a little bit starved of yarn at the moment. You know, so, like when you saw Laurie and fucking Gordy punching on on fucking NRL 360 about what's our national sport and like AFL and NRL, it's like, what the fuck are we talking about? Like, what are we talking about? We're running out of puff. Running out of puff when that's where you go. Yeah. And this is probably what we're seeing here. It's a byproduct of puff leaving the building. Yeah. We just want to get to finals. And then puff, puff, will, puff will return. You puff up again. Yeah, you puff up once the finals come. You get, you get another injection of <gasps> puff. Yeah. But... At the moment, Puff dwindling and Cosa taking it upon himself to try and motivate the team. He's a team player. Yeah. He's trying to motivate those around him with what you would probably see more in a uh, mixed touch competition. You know, girls score, get two points if they score sort of stuff. Yeah. 
then listen, like, you know, wh- where do you draw the line? How many cards are we going to have in this thing? Does it become a fucking Uno situation where it's like, what if the other team has a reverse card? And it's like, well, actually, no, now we're using our joker card on you. And if we get fucking 20 more points and it's eight competition points, how about that? Yeah. I can also at some point uh, choose to remove a player of my liking from the side. Mm, and bring him over to my team. Yeah, and he comes and plays for us. So we have 15, 14 men and you have 12. Yeah, so that would be a, a swapsy card. Yeah, swaps arenas. Yeah. Uh, you could also play a card if you want where you can borrow from your points differential and put it to your t- your score at the start. So let's say I have a points differential of 50. I, like that. I can go, I want to start against the Penrith Panthers with 50 points. Okay, so I'm going to give myself 50. So that's, and now is that like a mortgage? Are you taking like a loan out on, are you borrowing against your points? I think, no, I think that you would need, you, you, they would, you would be, you would, like a credit card, you bring down your credit limit. Okay. But so if I, if I give my, if I borrow from my points differential, yep. 50, yep. so I start with 50 points on, say, the Penrith Panthers, yep. I then win that game. Do I get those? Can I then return those points? Only if you play your return card. Okay. Okay. So I've got to have the return card. If, if I've already got, played if you, it. If you've played, if you played a PD card into a return card, then you can get your points back. Otherwise you're just going, I'm thinking the competition points are more important than my points differential. Does that make sense? Okay. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay. You can only play it if you've got a positive points differential as well. You can't go into negative territory. No, you can't. Because that's when, that's when the interest rates kick in. Yes. And if you're not paying back, then you're actually getting your points of reference going yeah. down and down. And for those players that are on the nudie run going into the last game, if you play the game in the nude and score a point, you get 16 points instead of four. But you have to be on a nudie. You have to be on a nudie. You have to have not scored a trial season. Yeah. Having scored one while playing And then you have to play naked. nude. Yeah. And then that would get mean that what do you get extra competition points for that as well? No, you get four. You get four uh, x on, on the point scoring. So a tries worth four points. Oh, you get okay, I like that. I like that. That's good. Has Corey mentioned any of these ones, or are these fresh? I think he might have mentioned them on his podcast. Like he went into like after SEN, he went. He sort of doubled down. Okay, and went down. into some detail. Yep. Yep. That's Obviously, good. there's a lot of Rich- the Latrell card as well. Whereby, if you do something fucked up, you can get Latrell to take your point. Take, take that takes the suspension That's for right. you. But we've known about that one for a while. Well, we have. We we floated that one a while back, um, and the uh, the the game picked that up straight away. Mm. Mm. Thoughts, mate. I like it. I like them all. I think there's a real room to fucking. You know, just mix it up a bit. Mix it up. Mix it up. Let's make the game. Let's let's try and make the game as confusing as. Phys- yeah. as well, as let's 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 make the gra- the game great again. Has anyone ever used that 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 tagline before? No. Nah. So making something great. Making again. something great nah. again. No, I don't think so. Not that I'm aware of. No, neither. I think that's a good one. We should use that. Let's use let's it. Let's trademark it. Okay. Okay. Great. Uh, that's us. That's us. Love the pun. I love the dribbler. Bye for now. Could you two just not talk anymore?